With the closure of the Nintendo eShop on the 3DS, Homebrew has become increasingly more interesting on the system. One of its more popular uses being emulation. Sometimes even getting praised as an emulation beast. Running NES, SNES, Game Boy and many other systems with ease. But mixed in there, you also hear about the 3DS being able to handle Nintendo 64 games. Considering a lot of people compare the graphical capabilities of the 3DS with the GameCube, that would somewhat make sense. So I tried the Daedalus X64 emulator and was a bit underwhelmed by its current capabilities. The performance on the games it can run are impressive without a doubt, but it's far from representative to state that the 3DS is an emulating beast that can do Nintendo 64 games as well. That's why I decided to try 10 different games to see how well they actually run. My goal is to give you an overview of what the 3DS can and can't do when it comes to N64 emulation. For this test I played the games for a duration of 45 minutes to a bit over an hour. I chose some familiar games based on a compatibility list for the Daedalus X64 emulator while playing on the version 1.0. This video might paint a very positive picture, but keep in mind everything that isn't in this video. Namely the games that immediately freeze upon loading, among other major game breaking issues. Unfortunately a huge chunk of the Nintendo 64 game library currently doesn't work properly. But if there's any interest I can cover more games in a future video, including some that apparently have many problems. So let's see what it's really like. Our first game is the cult classic Donkey Kong 64, a collectathon so infamously full of collectibles that it's in the Guinness World Record book for having the most in any game. Considering the original game on the Nintendo 64 required an expansion pack to double the console's RAM, you wouldn't expect to see it run on the 3DS. Yet here we are. Admittedly, it's really slow, but surprisingly consistent in its slowness. The game is thus technically playable, but it's not the most enjoyable experience. Cutscenes have this visual glitch where bars cut through the screen. And overall the audio is incredibly choppy. It's a bit of a shame because the sounds in Donkey Kong 64 are so nostalgic and unique. Sadly, even the DK rap is out of sync. But again, it's playable and the game only crashed a single time during my one hour play session. It was during the story intro. Luckily, if you load the save, it just goes on without playing the intro again. I didn't get much further than Jungle Japes, but the level worked just fine for me. I did quick save regularly just in case, so perhaps in later levels that's a good habit to keep up. What's a bit annoying about the controls on the 3DS, specifically for Donkey Kong 64, is that it uses the C stick a lot. So get ready to struggle with this little nub again. Either way, it's an okay experience, but you're better off looking elsewhere if you have alternatives. Mario Party, where friends were made and friends were lost. This title is a bit of an odd one when it comes to playing on the 3DS. Before recording this video I remember the game working just fine. I played the single player mode and the visuals looked very distorted, but I managed to play through multiple minigames without an issue. However, when I tried booting it up again for this video, I just couldn't get it to work anymore. No matter what I tried, it always crashed as soon as the world was being loaded. In the end, I couldn't even enter the main menu at all. I tried the European copy and the American. I tried deleting some files related to the game, but nope, it just doesn't work. That got me curious about Mario Party 2 and 3, but there it's a similar story. 
everything works perfectly fine up until a board gets loaded in. In Mario Party 3, a dual board loaded for a few seconds, giving me hope. But no. I even got a bit desperate with Mario Party 2 and actually tried... Rules Land. Not even Rules Land. I'm sure most of the minigames would run perfectly, but there's no way to play them without unlocking them in parties first. On the compatibility list it states that Mario Party 1 is perfectly playable and there's Reddit users claiming the same. So I tried it again the next day and look at that! This time I used quick saves to load back in whenever it crashed as the single player mode still didn't work. I did however get the minigame stadium to work. And indeed, the minigames work perfectly. 30 stable frames per second. But once you get back to the board, it's just a matter of time until it crashes again. Bit of a shame, but fun while it lasted. Our next game is Ridge Racer 64. According to the compatibility list it should work fine with minor graphical glitches. During actual gameplay the game consistently ran smoothly with no noticeable frame drops. It made for a really enjoyable experience and especially drifting around corners felt great. In replays I noticed frame drops when there was smoke from the tires or when there were a lot of cars on the screen. That was however not an issue when I was actually driving. Luckily the game never crashed while I was playing, at least not in third person mode. Later on I discovered that the game instantly crashes the moment the rear view mirror tries to appear. During my one hour session the game crashed a total of 8 times. Those crashes happen mostly inside menus or during the intro. I recommend saving a lot as it does happen every two races on average. The audio is a bit choppy and can at times sound like a mess. You did it! You're the and something that's also a bit irritating is the lack of a minimap. Additionally, the car color doesn't change properly during the car select screen. It does load in the right color, but the preview seems to be broken. Perhaps that's what's meant with minor graphical glitches, as I didn't notice anything else that was out of place. Wave Race 64, famous for its impressive water physics and still looking great to this day. Especially on the 3DS where the compatibility list claims perfect performance. And indeed, after playing for an hour I can confirm that it runs incredibly well. Not once was there a crash or any hiccup. Occasionally there was an odd sound sprinkled in there. But that's all the negative I can say about this game. It was also fun to try the widescreen hack, which looks nice unless the sun flashes onto the camera. Three, two, if you're in the mood for some jet ski racing, I can only recommend this title on the 3DS. Here's a cool game I haven't played before, Bomberman Hero. It's the second Bomberman game on the Nintendo 64 after Bomberman 64 and plays more like a platformer compared to its predecessor. Playing it felt intuitive and the performance was pretty stable. The sound is quite stuttery, but you somewhat get used to it. There were however a few freezes. They mostly happened outside of gameplay,
or in between loading scenes. Thankfully the game saves frequently, so lost progress wasn't an issue. If you've never played Bomberman Hero, I can only recommend it on the 3DS. The one and only rubber band simulator. Expected to run at full speed with minor graphical glitches, I can confirm the first but not the latter. During my one hour play session, time not only flew by with this classic, but it also felt right at home on the 3DS. Almost as if it was some sort of virtual console game if it had ever existed for Nintendo 64 games. It runs smoothly and even the sounds are all great. Only one time did I experience a weird sound. But other than that, everything seemed perfectly normal. Until, of course, the end. Then, the game froze. It's happened three times to me where I finish or leave a cup and the game just dies. I mean, after all, it's Mario Kart. Everything can go well all the way until the last moment. Would be a great game for the 3DS if only it wasn't for this blue shell of a crash right at the end. It's me, Mario! And here we have the most iconic game on the console, Super Mario 64. If someone's going to play an N64 emulator on the 3DS, this is the most obvious choice for a game to pick. Accordingly, as you might expect, the game runs perfectly at a steady 30 FPS. The sound quality is pretty good, with a few stutters here and there. And overall the visuals are what you'd expect to see in Super Mario 64. There's no graphical issues I could spot and even the texts and textures are perfect. One time I quit the level and then the game crashed. Other than that, Super Mario 64 saves pretty frequently and there were no other such occurrences. Overall, this is a must have if you have a Nintendo 64 emulator on your 3DS. It runs smoothly and according to the compatibility list you can get all 120 stars. Oh, Pokemon Stadium 2, such a nostalgic title. I remember how cool it was to see 2D sprites evolve into 3D models battling each other. Interesting with this game is that it's actually listed as incompatible. I got it before I even knew about the compatibility list and it goes to show that some of it is outdated or that some versions work better than others. Playing Pokemon Stadium 2 was fun and it's surprising how well it runs on the 3DS, considering all the graphical glitches everywhere. I really like seeing the battles unfold up until... Uh, not again! Yeah, during my play session it just froze right at the end of each battle as if I was playing Mario Kart 64 again. It's a rather frustrating spot to freeze on, and I'm not entirely sure if it's bad luck or just the reality of it. But at least the minigames all seem to work fine. Honestly, in my opinion, this is the best part of this game anyway. The first 3D game of the Legend of Zelda franchise, Ocarina of Time. Still worth playing over two decades later. As you may know, it actually has a full remake already on the 3DS. 
So is the emulated version a good alternative? It's alright. During my play session it ran at a comfortable 20 FPS most of the time. There were no crashes, but each time while loading the pause menu, my butt did a lot of clenching. After loading in, there were some graphical glitches too. Occasionally when loading bigger areas in these tunnels, the frame rate would dip significantly. Or when doing certain actions. The C-Stick controls are also a pain here and can make some situations more difficult than they need to be. I noticed that the sound was pretty good, but a little choppy in certain areas. And especially the chest opening jingle was rather underwhelming. But overall, it works. It's not the best experience, and if possible I'd choose the remake over this, but if you don't have that option, give it a try and see if it works for you. And our last game is Star Fox 64 or Lilith Wars in the PAL region. The beloved space shooter, like Ocarina of Time, also has a remake on the 3DS. Flippy, watch out! Don't be on your tail. Like Ocarina of Time, however, Star Fox 64 runs at a smooth and stable 30 FPS. There were no noticeable frame dips and it felt nice to play. Overall, the sound was acceptable at best. As I don't have the remake on the 3DS, I can't recommend one over the other, but it's definitely worth a try with the Nintendo 64 emulator. So, in general the game's performances are acceptable on average, and I've had an okay experience with all the games I tested. Playing Nintendo 64 games on the 3DS feels amazing and right at home. But at this moment the emulator doesn't provide a trustworthy experience just yet, as the games frequently crash and many run at an unstable pace. A good habit to take from this is to quick save regularly so you don't have to go through a lot of frustration. With some games like Donkey Kong 64, I don't see myself playing through it at such slow speeds. Which is a shame, because even with these issues, I really enjoyed myself and would love to keep playing. But unfortunately, it's not bearable in the long run, and I'm afraid of having to redo sections if it were to crash. I have to however state how amazing and impressive all of this is nonetheless. The people behind the Daedalus X64 project are doing incredible work and I really appreciate the possibility to do this with my 3DS. Occasionally there's still updates for the emulator, so it can really only go up from here. In the meantime, if you have patience and don't mind these issues too much, I recommend giving it a go. The 3DS may not be an emulation beast, but it can still provide some good experiences with select games. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video. If you have any video suggestions or feedback, feel free to let me know in the comments.